by her hair as shown and thin. Realms and fall. Hey, want something to drink? That'll be it. When she walked the street, war. They said all these centuries. That's just pretty. Ihana. Come on, Peter, push the box. You just gotta keep their asses from time to time. That's just how it is. Still, she. Ah, now to have some good chops. Shift drag on forever. Keep your fingers to yourself, will you? This isn't art. Sitten mietitään, miten tältä pääsee pois. Ah, täällä on talo myöskin niin kuin maan alla. Move along. Mahti koira. Tää näyttäis keskeisemmältä reitiltä. Noi pystyy linnoittautumaan tuonne luolaan, mutta niin kuin se yksi nainen sanoi, niin no, ei näytä kovin hyvältä. Voisin ottaa lentoratsun, koska tää on, tää on aika niin kuin isotasosta aluetta. Tuossa, tässä itse asiassa näkee, kuinka pienellä alueella mä oon itse asiassa pyörinyt tähän mennessä. Tässä on aika paljon lääniä. Walk blessed, my lady. Where do you need? Sure. Where to? You can't animate your position in the car. Hello. Negotiate. You know his demands. There's no basis for negotiation. He has not seen what we have seen. The writings, the memories of the prophetess. If he just realized... Shit. What took you so long? And where is Constantine? That's a long story. And those were his final words? I... I can't believe it. Simply another victim of the High Ones. If we do not activate huh? the beacon soon, he won't be the last. Oh right, the beacon. If it's activated, we'll simply glow the red madness away, won't we? Or maybe we could, for once in all this, do something that actually makes sense and focus our resources on finding an alchemistical or thaumaturgial solution to this problem rather than trusting in a pile of scrap metal. Oh, by the prophet's ass, won't you just shut up for a minute? All day long you do nothing but babble, getting on our nerves, and nothing you ever say gets any closer to a fucking solution. So why don't you just shove off to one of the bathhouses? Go torture the washerwomen with your never-ending lamentations. <laughs> that would be helpful for a change. <laughs> you will take that back. Will I? Come here and make me. I'd be delighted. Blasphemy. God, your this tongue, is blasphemy. wild mage. Or... or what? Are you going to kill me? That's what you do best. You and your fucking order. Silence! You are angry, Lishari Pegast. And I understand why. But in the moment you let that anger destroy this alliance, Firespark's sacrifice will have been in vain. Is that what you want? I... Is that Firespark what you want? Kuten kuten tämän, no. 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 Good. I am tired of this endless bickering. We have a responsibility, and we will fulfill it. Well said, Arantheo. And how exactly do you think we are going to do that? Without the sources, the beacon is as worthless as a heap of rusty iron. 
The Chroniclers are on it, and they will find the answer. Novice, tell Commander Aaron to join us. We need to plan the defense of the land. You, Prophetess, will speak to me as soon as you have recovered. Now, let us get to work. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I did. Please, Taylor, Why do you ask? Is right. A war with Neren? This is madness. That's a good question. I, know that it is I suppose in the attack. end, it was just a hunch I had. The beacon. Plus, all these civil wars in other countries yes, didn't exactly beacon, invite one beacon, to stay. Huh. The beacon. We don't even know what this thing does, let alone if it will work. If you start a war only because of that damn machine, it means putting the lives of thousands at risk. Only because of some vague idea. This is ludicrous, Taylor. It's entirely irrational. The man I knew would never have acted like this. Yes, because that man is dead. I've made decisions driven by fear and selfishness before. And they were always wrong. I will not let that happen again. Seriously, Natara, stop acting as if this were about reason. You're just afraid of making sacrifices for oh, what you believe in. You always were. Sacrifices. This is about your damn pride, Tilor. Nothing else. Okay. Varmaan seuraavana aamuna sitten. Juoni jatkuu. The sun be praised, you've made it. Hmm. Constantine. He didn't deserve this. It's just not fair. Then none of us are strong enough. Me. Yeah, Constantine wasn't exactly the most approachable fellow, but he was a damn skilled mage. I... I have to talk to you as soon as possible. It's about the seal in that letter we found on the mercenaries in Old Rationgrad. I believe I'm onto something. Their client is from Inderal. From Ark, to be more precise. Let's not talk here, though. Meet me in the Dancing Nomad. I'll mm. be in the first room upstairs, right at the end of the staircase. And hurry. Irrelevant. This madman, Koarek. He has completely reshuffled the cards. Now we not only have to deal with the High Ones, but also with him and his fanatics. <sighs> However, there's also good news. You have probably seen it already. Physically, yes. And we also know how it works now. And how it can put an end to the cycle. What the? It is easier than we thought. The beacon was constructed for one thing. To destroy the High Ones. Once reconstructed, infused with energy and activated, lit, as the Pyrenees called it, it can banish the High Ones from this plane of existence. It is complicated if you try to understand how it works. You know that the High Ones are not made of flesh and blood as we are. Essentially, they can be compared to the cold or to shadows. Omnipresent elements, yet we cannot touch them. Energy, if you will. However, there is a counterpart to each energy. Cold and fire, shadow and light. The High Ones and the Beacon. Yes. Imagine a torch driving away the darkness in the moment it is ignited. This is what the Beacon can do. Except that the banishing will be permanent. Yes, as I said, it needs to be infused with energy before it can be lit. I take it you have noticed the three sockets on its base. They are what it draws its power from. Once they are filled, the beacon can be ignited and the High Ones will be undone once and for all. At least, if the old writings are true. The only thing left for us to find out is what these energy sources are. But we are close. 
Give the Arcanists some more time, and I will let you know if there's any news. In the meantime, get equipped accordingly. Some of the Nerimis have landed already, and outbreaks of the Red Madness become more and more frequent as we speak. No, there are not enough, and we must keep the few there are in our possession, in case anything unexpected should happen. The only thing we can do to stop the madness is to destroy the High Ones as soon as possible. Well, it's only fair to tell you. You've always been honest to me, so I will do the same. Have you ever heard of the Night of the Thousand Fires? Between 8,192 and 8,202, there was an underground movement in Kira called the Red Half Moon. They were brought into being by a group of intellectuals and philosophers who, under all the freedom of thought Saldrin granted them, started questioning the reign of the Golden Queen, and thus the Lightborn themselves. Saldrin saw himself as the god of knowledge, and accordingly he reigned his country. In Kira, no opinion is forbidden which is why it is home to countless magic schools and universities, where people do nothing but discuss the reason for being all day long. An appealing thought if you hear it for the first time, but a cunning people isn't easy to reign. There have been more revolts and riots in Kira than bones in a graveyard, and the Red Half Moon was the worst of them. Correct, just as my son did. But other than him, they fought like cowards. Terror, dust crystals planted in the marketplaces, and assassinations, you name it. If they killed innocents, they blamed the Golden Queen. And if they killed her soldiers, they celebrated themselves as liberators. However, they never succeeded in putting her down, and neither did she in destroying them. Which is why the court turned to the Lightborn for help. A division of the Holy Order, led by me, a young keeper of barely 30 winters. None to be taken seriously. You know, not everywhere is the Order as present as here on Enderal, or as it once was on Narim. In Kira, we were ridiculed. I saw the Kiranian keepers who served the Golden Queen. A bunch of decadent gluttons who had dedicated themselves to the court's banquets rather than to the will of the gods. They were pathetic. A moon after our arrival, we received an anonymous tip on where one of the half moon spaces was supposed to be located in a small coastal village. As we entered it, we were greeted by the township's elders, and the villagers themselves had gathered behind them. You should have seen how they stared at us, as if we were plunderers. I should have seen by then that something was wrong. Yes, but if there was one thing the Red Half Moon was good at, it was sowing lies. According to them, we were nothing but butchers who executed everyone unable to recite the revelation word for word. That's what they wanted us to think, and they did a good job at that. A veiled person here, an archer on the rooftops there. I got nervous, because villagers or not, they bested us in numbers, and they had cattled us. Then a man seemed to charge at us, and I gave the order to draw weapons. It was just the spark they needed. <laughs> no, not a fight. A massacre. The villagers had pitchforks and shepherd staffs, and we had shadow steel swords, let alone the fact that we were trained warriors. I realized that I had made a mistake a split second after it started, but it was too late by then. My men, they slaughtered them all like pigs. At the end of the day, 300 people were dead, and only 10 of them were keepers. Have you ever been in a big battle? Even if my men would have stopped, the villagers were blinded with rage and panic. No. 
From the moment I gave the order, it was too late. Well, what better proof of the Lightborn's cruelty is there than a division of keepers who, out of pure wickedness, slaughtered an entire village, women, children included. If the people had already distrusted us before that, that distrust had turned into hatred, and nothing could have changed that, not even the Golden Queen's heralds. We set sail back to Enderal a week later. Two years after that, the Red Half Moon destroyed itself due to infighting. Ironic, isn't it? Maybe. The Lightborn and the Grandmaster back at that time showed the compassion I wouldn't grant myself. But I learned one thing, and that is that I will never again let fears about my own life influence my decisions. What happened in Kira was the consequence of my own cowardice, and my unwillingness to give my life for a just cause. That will never happen again. <laughs> Poika johti kapinaa Lightbornia vastaan. What? Really? That's interesting. Provided this is true, that means that the emissaries aren't just people who fight the cleansing. They are people who fight for it too. Hmm. And that also means that whoever granted us our powers and our purpose isn't an enemy of the High Ones, but a neutral party. Hmm. Possibly, but we will find out all about that once we've taken care of the High Ones. Now, with the Neremese against us too, there's only one thing that matters. Resolve. We must not hesitate and allow anything to delay the lighting of the beacon any further. I beg your pardon. What? And the same goes for me? That's ridiculous. They wanted to deceive you, to sow discord. I saw the threat the cleansing posed before anyone else did. And without me, we would have never come that far. Something changed inside me since I fled from my prison. I feel it. And it is the same thing that made you a part of all this. Now, enough of this. Entäs jos tää ei ikinä pakenu vankilasta, vaan se kuoli siellä? Hmm? Hmm? Jaha. Providence, are you in there? There are... Kivrash, what... Why, what have you done? Watch your tongue, Shari. Be glad that the blood is already dry, or else you'd be nothing but a pile of bones by now. <sighs> Forgive me, I... I just can't believe it. Anyone but Lishari? Yes, as I know, Neha. But she was a good woman. We both know that we're not involved in this. So please tell me why you and Lashari wanted to meet up here? Were the two of you close? I wasn't aware Lashari liked women, <laughs> too. Hmm, pitäisikö hän tää luottaa? I see. But who has killed her then? This doesn't make any sense. Maybe the murderer has left a clue. We have to search.
Okay. What's this? Let me see. Yes! This could be our clue. No, certainly not. But come to think about it, it doesn't really help us either. There are so many dust addicts in Ark, it would take years just to count them. Oh, by the name of the sun, I will inform the Order. Yes, yes, you do that. But come back to the temple as soon as you're finished, all right? The Arch Magister has found something out about those sources we need for the beacon. Even though we paid a high price for it. Mitä velhoja kuluu nyt? Tällä tavalla kyllä ihan tiivistää ja seinät joku on voinut periaatteessa nähdä jotain. Mut niin, niin tää on kaatunut. Murhattu on tossa. Se on jäänyt kiinni. Jesper on paikalla. Hetkinen. Tuossa on verta. Tuossa on verta. Siinä heti johtaa tohon. No, okei. Okay. Ihan niinku se olisi lyöty tossa ja heitetty tohon sängyn. Tähän ei ole avainta. Etkin niin joku on tietänyt, että se halus puhua tälle päähenkilölle. A machine that can banish these highways. If it isn't the prophet, what's wrong? You look. I know. Shah Rim has already told me. I hardly knew her, but it's horrible. Different ideologies or not, she was a fine young mage. And a knowledge of the Pyrenees was impressive. Yes, on that too. Got him on. We find the ones who did this and fast. That's you. Villiers, Kuna, Yasenta. We just had a breakthrough with the beacon. Oliko se sen oma miakka, mitä se oli murattu? At least as far as the sockets go, yes. In the old tablets, you found an old Dothugrad. There is talk of black embers, which are supposed to be some kind of energy supply for the machine. 
This is what we've been asking ourselves over the past few weeks. And then it fell like pelt from our eyes. The Pyreans were talking about the Black Pearls. Old jewels, sometimes known as Blackstones. They appeared for the first time in the Golden Era, and every self-important noble literally fought to get one in his possession. Apparently, they originated from Stormwind, the old city in the heart of Arctwind. They changed owners for decades, sometimes by violence, sometimes by gold. The whole thing only stopped when the owners took note of an undesirable side effect. Uh -huh. Corruptio. No. At least not with any known magic. And that's what's so strange about it. Nevertheless, all of their owners eventually shared the same fate. Countess Katua from Nerim, for example, whose castle burnt down to its foundations. According to a survivor of this tragedy, she was to blame for that. He claimed that he saw her the night it happened, laughing hysterically and dancing in the dining room and summoning waves of fire all around her. She was not previously known to have any magical talent in her. Correct. Plus, all of them eventually showed similar symptoms hmm. of delusion, like those possessed by the Red Madness do. A peculiar coincidence, if you ask me. Eli tuo on periaatteessa haivonien voimaa. Not quite. They... Those who owned a pearl tried to get rid of it, or lock it up somewhere safe. And eventually they fell into oblivion. Tell her your theory, Archmagister. Uh, yes, of course. <clears throat> we believe that the stones carry energy, pure, uncontrolled magic, and that the High Ones use them for their own purposes. Correct. The Pearl's magic make their owners powerful, but the High Ones befoul them, so to speak. Like a poisoned potion. I know it sounds odd, but the parallels are too striking to ignore. The red shimmer in the victim's eyes, the slow descent into madness, and ultimately this irrational, destructive act of violence. That's what we thought too, but it seems that we were wrong. Maybe the High Ones never leave our planes at all, even after the cleansing. Maybe they are even part of this world, just like the tides or the elements. And the death of the gods is only what really sets them rolling, so to speak. That's a question I've been asking myself since we first learned of the cycle. Who knows? Maybe they like for us to suffer. Or maybe they see us as we see ants, whose lives simply mean nothing. Or maybe the very concept of intentions is meaningless to them. That's what we think, yes. Nothing else in this world possesses that much raw power. Which is why you will find them for us. No, because we know what we are dealing with. Unlike those who fell victim to the stones. Imagine them as a powerful, magical sword. A fool won't know how to wield it and will eventually cut himself with it. A seasoned warrior, however, can use its power for his purposes. Which doesn't mean, however, that we will be careless with them. What we need is their energy, and once we have transferred that to the beacon, their shells will be useless to the High Ones. Correct. That's right. But we don't need all of them. The beacon has three sockets, and that is how many of the stones we will acquire. Archmagister. I studied the history of the pearls as a young arcanist, and I think that my notes might give you some hints as to where you should start looking. Give me until tomorrow. By then I will have prepared the relevant excerpts. One day. Just come to me whenever you have questions. And hurry. I take it you have already noticed this. But Nerimi's troops are roaming our land and building outposts, and the Red Madness is also getting worse as we speak. Now go, Prophet. The sooner we find these stones, the better. Saira, so, good to see you. I heard about what happened on Half Moon Island. It's a wonder you and that mercenary made it back alive. But war. It just seems so unreal. How has it come to this? 
Now we not only have to fight these high ones, but also some fanatic who thinks he knows best. Oli oletettavissa. If they are, then maybe we were foolish to think that the Red Madness is the only weapon at their disposal. Tell me, Saira, how is it possible that our beliefs about what's best for mankind are so different? Why are we so eager to be at each other's throats? I'm not sure. You know what I find so hard to understand? Why there are so few people who actually care. So few people who feel the need to change something like you and I do. <sighs> there are moments I just feel so powerless. As if we all know that if we keep going Mal like this, Francis we're blessings. headed for a catastrophe. But instead of changing course, we just stand by and watch. Do you know the feeling? Yes, I mean... Is it so hard to see that this world could be such a better place if we'd only care a tiny bit more about something other than what's happening in front of our doorsteps? You understand what I'm trying to say, don't you? You know that feeling too. I thought so. Whenever I think about it, I find it so hard not to get angry. Take all those upper city snobs with their colorful garments and exotic perfumes. They could put all that money to such good use if only they wanted to, but no, they don't. Because they just don't give a damn about the poor. Sometimes I imagine going down there, grabbing one of them by the collar and dragging them down into the Undercity. And there I'd force them to see, just for once. But even that probably wouldn't help. I guess we only care about the things that directly affect us. Who fights against poverty if he's never suffered from it? Mm -hmm. Yes. <sighs> and once again, you've had to listen to another deluge of my whining. I guess I'm just not a person for pleasantries. Sorry. Um, yes, that uh, might <laughs> be the case. Saira, I, I have to ask you something. You said these things to me. Why? Compliments. Comments that you... I, I, I don't know how to put it. Valinnan tilanne. No, but... I just don't think that's a good idea. <sighs> I'm not made for things like that. I've never felt the need for them, and honestly, I think it's dangerous. Is it cold, for me. No, never. No, it has nothing to do with that. It would just be a bad idea, that's all. Because! You know a lot about me, Saira, and I appreciate our contact, which is the only reason I just told you all of this. So please, respect my wishes. Let's leave it at that for now. We've still got a lot to do. The first of Quarax chips will reach shore soon, and we have to be prepared. As if they ever listen to me. Wherever you look, where is this supposed to mean? Yes. Why can't it ever be easy? Yes? Well, finding out about the Black Stones was definitely a great step forwards. But still, we're left with a myriad of questions. Sometimes I feel pathetic, to be honest. Uh -huh. Like a child asked to understand the functioning of a Starling airship. I do? I thought I had gotten rid of it by now. But yes, I'm originally from Mirim. Just like you, as I've heard. Oh, 
I don't know. Probably because I don't have very fond memories of my time there. You know, if someone would have told you 20 years ago that one day I would be the Arch Magister of the Holy Order, you'd have probably laughed in his face. <laughs> it's absurd just to think of it. You know, I was a slave there. Yes, you see, I was born into a traveling group of Eterna minstrels. I never got to know my father, though, and living that way was hard. So my mother eventually decided to burn all bridges behind us and start over. <sighs> Sorry, I'm, I'm babbling. I don't want to bother you with my boring stories. Well, after some days on the road, we met a traveling merchant who gave us a ride to the next village. A, a small one named Sildren in the Salathan Forest. It seemed almost perfect at the beginning. The place was quiet, and my mother found herself a job as a weaver in the local Count's castle. One day, however, the Count simply stopped paying her, and, well, when she asked for the reason, he told her that we were his property from that moment on, just like that. Why wouldn't it be? We were just a woman and a young son, and he owned both the land and the local guard. We had to serve this Creole, that was the Count's name, for nine years. It was horrible. No. No one. We weren't the only slaves he kept, and the villagers were too afraid to do anything. As for Chancellor Baratheon's armies, well, I'd be surprised if they even knew Sildren existed. Pure luck, I suppose. One day, an Endralean merchant and his escort passed through the village. They were on their way to Waverock to catch a ship from there. And just by coincidence, he saw me crushing some herbs I had found in the forest. That's what I did in the little spare time I had, you know. The Salathan Forest is so incredibly rich with plants, you have no idea. What I didn't know was that I had found an entire sheaf of God's tongue. That impressed the merchant so much that he simply bought me. He left her there. Believe me, what he did had nothing to do with mercy. He just saw that there was money to be made off of me. I cried and protested, of course. But two months later, our ship arrived in Ark, where he got infected with flesh maggots and died shortly thereafter. Luckily enough, he was a sublime. And since his relatives didn't know what to do with me once he was dead, they simply asked the order to grant me the novitiate, which they did. Look, where is this supposed I've a left path. Lead. Sounds crazy when I tell it like that. And it probably is. But back then, it just happened. I tried, but as you can imagine, my obligations made my options to do so very limited. Only recently, however, word reached me from a mercenary whom I sent over. According to him, Creo is dead, and his castle was deserted. But who knows if he just said that to appease me. I think when all of this is over, I might ask the Grand Master for permission to travel there myself. And then, who knows? <laughs> By the righteous path, now I really am babbling. I'm sure a woman like you has better things to do than listen to the stories of a boring chronicler. I should probably get back to business. Forgive me. Ah, yes. Here. There they are. I've marked the most relevant parts, so you don't have to read the entire book. Just see if they tell you anything that could give you a clue as to where you should start searching. I will be waiting at the beacon. Malfassi's blessing. Ah, but the food too sour. Oh. Is it important? Malfassi's blessings. That pretty boy, you mean? Pretty boy. Oh, he was here yesterday, all night long, with some noble woman. Haven't seen him since, though. Niinpä tietysti. He looked a little battered, if you ask me. You know him well. I see. Hmm. You know what? If you're looking for him anyway, could you give him this once you find him? A courier brought it along a few hours ago. Aye. A young woman, apparently. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, one of his beloved. Who knows? Seemed urgent, though. Anyway, I need to get back to work. I'll tell the guy you were looking for him if he comes back. 
important. Uh huh. Okay, down is your man. Jäämärissä. Okei. Mikä ihme? Mhm. Yanu or I hereby confess my sins. For decades, I imprisoned men and women from all continents of Vin and sold them to the highest bidders. Four hundred and sixty-two men, five hundred sixty-one women. And two hundred ten children have me to thank for a life spent in slavery. I don't remember their names. Now, however, the time of punishment has finally come, and I thank oh, the bold judge. judge who will carry out my judgment. Crucified, I shall be hoisted over a pool of acid. Whose caustic fumes will burn away the skin from my body. Nobody will come to my aid, and I will die in solitude, as I should. Yanu or I, slaver. Hmm. No, tuo on lie lievästi ikävä tapa, kun lähti. Jesparilla on ehkä vähän nyt selitettävää kuitenkin. Kaikenlaisia herkkuja. Pilaantuneita. Ja tyyppi, joka on kuollut nälkään tietysti. Tänä tällä on psykopaati jutulta. I, Alaria Nettlegrass, hereby confess my sins. What? For years I murdered under the moniker of the Black Widow. Man or woman, young or old, it didn't matter as long as the pay was right. Never was I brought to justice for my crimes, for I always knew how to outwit the law. I am a despicable creature, without mind or compassion. No better than a rabid animal. Now, however, bone the time judge. of punishment has finally come, and I thank the Bone Judge who will carry out my judgment. I shall remain in this cage until I die of starvation. Food and drink shall be within sight, but never within reach. 
Nobody will come to my aid, and I will die in solitude, as I should. Ilarian Nettlegrass, hired killer. Poor my brother in arms. Mikä on tämä Bone Judge? En tiedä kyllä mitä täällä on. Ja, tässä on taas jonkinlainen hurmaava maassa itsemurha. Jaha, antanut rottien syödä itsensä. Mikä sen mukavampaa? I, Boreo Oakenvale, hereby confess me sins. For decades, I abducted children from the Undercity and locked them in this basement. I defiled them, let them starve, and then sold them to the highest bidders, who, like me, were also driven by carnal sins and perverse desires. Now, however, the time of punishment has finally come, and I thank the bone judge who will carry out my judgment. In shackles, I will watch as a pack of rats eats the flesh from my bones. Nobody will hear me screams. Just like there was no one to hear those of the poor souls whose lives are destroyed. Signed, Boreo Oakenvale. Child trafficker and murderer. Tämä on oikeasti peripo. Okay.
Aha. Tää on nyt tosi epäilyttävän näköinen. You. Why are you here? What? Uh, no, no. I don't worry about it. I just needed some air. You know, I've had this question in my head for quite some time now and I, I can't figure out the answer to it. Okay. Imagine a girl. Ever since she was a child, she's been abused by her father. Beaten, in other words. She grows to be a woman and eventually her father dies. Then she falls in love with a man who has a lot of similarities with uh -huh. her father. She doesn't know why she loves him, but she does. And though it all seems nice in the beginning, he becomes more and more aggressive, starts screaming at her for no reason, until one day he too grabs the cane she knows all too well. Now, the question. On a very conceptual level, who is responsible for the situation the woman's in? Her companion because he abuses her? The woman herself because she unconsciously picked a man similar to her father, or her father, because he was the one who beat her in the first place. From a logical point of view, yes. He's the one ultimately responsible for hitting her. But does he really consciously choose to do so? Or perhaps he too only imitates what he learned from his father? I don't know. No particular reason, I suppose. Anyway, you said you were looking for me. What's wrong? What, so the Archmagister really believes we Delverics owned one of those stones? I would have known that. Believe me, I've snuck inside our manor's treasure chamber more than once. And there was no black stone whatsoever. Not in the least, no. Setting aside the fact that what you're describing is bloody spooky, I don't have the slightest idea who might have an interest in sending me on this morbid paper chase through Ark. Either whoever did this has mistaken me for someone else, or we're dealing with a seriously disturbed individual. Yeah, I already suspected as much. But still, it doesn't change the fact that I have no idea who might be behind this, and why he sent me this package and not, for example, the Ark Guard. No, none. That's... Wait. Could you show me those letters again? By the wise hermit, that's... No, that, that's not possible. These fragments, if you combine all of them, they make a sentence. Knock, knock, who's there? Come in alone, if only you dare. It... but... No, that doesn't make sense. I know that phrase from my childhood. A deal um. I made, it was, it was our code when we snuck out of the house to go on one of our expeditions. Yes, but no, that, that just doesn't make sense. The deal is an apothecary, not a goddamn assassin. You said one of the corpses you found was a hired killer. How, how in blazes could my sister kill someone like that? And why? The kaki. Oh, come on, that's just bullshit. Even if the stone somehow gave her the power to do this, Adila wouldn't hurt a fly. Come on, I'll prove it to you. Meet me in Duneville. I'll take you to our hideout. Yeah. Ah, there you are. Our old manor's in the desert, a few miles to the northwest from Duneville. It's quite a march, but doable. Well, what should I think about it? It starts getting really ugly. Even if Nerim manages to only get one-fifth of their army over here, the Order has a massive problem. Plus, most soldiers of the City Guard have never used their weapons on anything else than training dummies.
Huhhuh, hieron... Silver Steel Bow, okei. Okay. Out of the Righteous Bad. Okei, okay, mielenkiintoista. Tikari taas pelasti. Tää oli yllättävän hyvät aseet kyllä. Nothing left but rubble. Otherwise, then how long has it been since I was last here? Come on, we're almost there. Stay secret forever. Anyway, I'll go on in. This is all nonsense.
Lost, lost ones. I think farther down, yeah. They belong to an old landlord. When Adila and I came here, we always made sure the gate stayed shut. Poor sods. <laughs> Kivoja seikkailupaikkoja kyllä. Joku kaivos työläinen on päästänyt ne epäkuolleet vapaaksi täällä. There, up ahead. That's the clearing where Adila and I always went. If someone's waiting for us, then it'll be there. I... I don't think we should go down together. If Adila really is waiting down there, and I'm still not sure she is, I'm pretty confident she wants me to come alone, as our code said. So, I suggest you stay hidden and cover my back. Yeah. You see that platform up ahead? This will get me down to the pit. You should take the path through the crypt, just down that tunnel a few steps back from here. Then stay hidden. This is all just a misunderstanding, I'm sure of it.
Mik, miksei Jespar voi ikinä viedä mihinkään kivaan paikkaan minua? Saarna pela pelasti taas kyllä. So you came. I have to admit, I didn't expect that. Adila. So it's true. What is this? Why am I here? And what did you do to that man? Still as forgetful as you were back then, aren't you, brother? To the circle! Now! On your knees! Now look at him, Jaspar. Look at him carefully. <sighs> Valencio Duran. By the name of the sun. The man who killed our family. Correct. Uh -huh. You should have seen it. How he screamed and begged for mercy. Pathetic. But I'm afraid I've got bad news for you, Valencio. Never again. I'll make sure that you never again hurt anyone, and I'll enjoy it. Just as I'll enjoy what I'll do to all those who are up next. Adila, please. This is ridiculous. You have no idea what you're saying, let alone what you're doing. Please, just- I know damn well what I'm doing, better than I ever did. I'll continue where father had to stop, and I'll make them all pay, all these bastards who think they are above justice. I sh 
Known you wouldn't understand. Just look at you, staring off into space and asking all these stupid questions. But you know what? I'm not here to justify myself. I'm here because I think that despite all you did, despite all you became, you deserve to witness justice as much as I do. To see this bastard pay for what he's done. And believe me, I will not make it quick. The Black Stone. Oh, damn. Then, then it's really true. You know of the stone? Yes. Yes, I... Uh, listen to me, Adila. Whatever you've done over the past months, you didn't do it of your own free will. The stone, it, it's evil, and it controls you. What is this, Jaspar? One of your brilliant jokes? We Dalvariks have had this stone for generations. Father, he lived this calling, but he failed to see what the stone really was. A gift of fate. A means for us to carry out our destiny. To bring justice to a world where there is none. But I saw, and I will use it. No, no, no you're seeing this wrong. The, the stone, it, it's cursed. It wants you to... D shit, damn it, I, I just don't know what to say. Surprise, Jespar. You never did. But it doesn't matter now. Go, Jespar. I've changed my mind. I got sentimental. Thought I owed you this, but I really don't. You don't understand me, just as you never understood father. And listening to you talk makes me remember why I kept away from you all these years. Just look at what you've become, running around and working for the kind of people Father tried to bring down. Treasure hunter. You're a thug. You might as well just have spit on Father's grave. <laughs> yeah, you'd know. <sighs> all right. This is getting us nowhere. You obviously think you know what you're doing, but you don't. Which is why... You'll now give me the stone. Before it'll make you do something you'd regret. What? The Black Stone. You'll give it to me. Something bad's about to happen, and without it, we won't be able to stop it. You can keep doing whatever it is that you do, but you'll have to do it without magic. I'm sorry if this isn't what you wanted to hear. So, this is why you really came. You want the stone for yourself. What did they pay you just far, huh? What? No! Go! Adila, I... Go! As you wish. I'm sorry. No? You... Ah, script, script taas jökätä. What? Who are you? I know. You damn fool, Jaspar. You bloody damn fool. I guess I should have known he wouldn't have come alone. He always had a problem with following instructions. So you are what? His sidekick? What will you do? Fight me? I have to warn you, that's a bad idea. I thought so. Tapoit sitten Jesparin. Surprise, Jespar. You never did. But it... 
doesn't matter now. Go, Jespar. I've changed my mind. I got sentiment. Thought I owed you this, but I really don't. You don't understand me, just as you never understood father. And listening to you talk makes me remember why I kept away from you all these years. Just look at what you've become. Running around and working for the kind of people father tried to bring down. Treasure hunter. You're a thug. You might as well just have spit on father's grave. <laughs> yeah, you'd know. <sighs> All right. This is getting us nowhere. You obviously think you know what you're doing, but you don't. Which is why you'll now give me the stone. Before it'll make you do something you'd regret. What? The black stone. You'll give it to me. Something bad's about to happen, and without it, we won't be able to stop it. You can keep doing whatever it is that you do, but you'll have to do it without magic. I'm sorry if this isn't what you wanted to hear. So, this is why you really came. You want the stone for yourself. What did they pay you just far, huh? What? No! Uh, go! Adila, I... Go! As you wish. I'm sorry. No me tati carry así. Oh. What? Who are you? I guess I should have known he wouldn't have come. I thought so. Tässä on virtaa. Nyt on jopa jonkinlainen mahdollisuus. Kärryää vielä tossa. Oh. Tämä. How unexpectedly death calls us to him. It is bitter, is it not? Unfair. You are angry because you blame me for the death of your friend. But I only did what had to be done. You are furious about the danger I brought upon you. But what would have happened if I hadn't been there in that ship? Let us dare a glimpse, prophetess. A glimpse into the reality, which you prefer to this one. Three hours after your brawl, Captain Rosio's ship enters the harbor of Ark. You wait until the noise falls silent, and together with your friend, you sneak onto the deck. And you almost make it. A few arm's lengths from the safety of the dock, a sailor named Rajik takes note of your presence. 
There is no need for an explanation as to who you are. And maybe on a normal day, Rajik would have let you run. But not today. For years, he has been eagerly awaiting his promotion to become a petty officer of the 8th class. And yet today, it was announced that his loathed rival had won it instead of him. And how angry he is. How furious. And who knows? Maybe it is not too late. What better way to impress the captain than to be the one who discovers two stowaways who have eaten the crew's bread for a month? From there, it ends quickly. One sword for your neck, the other one for your friends, and no one to grant you a second life this time. But that is not what happened. The first beat of a wing, and where are you now? You have abilities others wouldn't even dare to dream of. You can hear the echo of the future. And you will make decisions whose extent even you will barely understand. So tell me, Prophetess. Isn't that a fate preferable to the other? You accuse me of lying. And your doubts are justified. For I cannot see the future. However, there is no need for that. All that is required is a glimpse beyond the surface. And suddenly it becomes clear that we are nothing but a sea of endless possibilities. And if one listens long enough, the shapeless takes on form, and the unfathomable becomes tangible. You wonder whether I belong to those whom you fight. But no, I do not. The High Ones, humanity, the emissaries, these are but elements of the game. I am more than that. Hmm. You ask if I can see more than just this branch, and the answer is yes, I can. But considering what I am, that is not much of a feat. You want to know if what threatens you, threatens other realities too. And yes, it does. The cycle is a logical consequence, born from the right circumstances. And these are not limited to your branch. You wonder what I am. Yet your question should not be what, but where. And the answer to this is everywhere what you see right now is merely a splinter you think my intention is to disconcert you but you're wrong i am here because you think it was i who took someone you cared for and although you err i do not like being seen as a destroyer which is why I will wipe away my debt, which was never there to begin with. Step back. Maybe we will meet again. Maybe not. That's my name. But Adila, what happened? That. But I, I, I only remember a flash of fire, and then 
darkness. Everything's so blurry. What? What? <sighs> okay, okay, I, I'm sorry, but this is all just a little too much. Please, just, just give me some time with my sister, all right? Go back to Ark with that bloody stone. Go anywhere, but please, just leave me alone. Vähän ehkä liikaa tälle kaverille tosiaan. A machine that can vanish these high ones. Have you found any of this? Oh, by the righteous path. His own sister? Oh, I had heard about those murders. It's cruel, truly cruel. Why in blazes are the high ones doing this? I think and I think, but I just can't find an answer. Maybe. Anyhow, let's see if we were right. Olipas se taas episodi. Jos katsotte tätä YouTubesta, niin muistakaa tykätä ja ehkä jopa kirjautua kanavan käyttäjäksi, koska muuten YouTube-algoritmit unohtaa mun olemassaolon ihan täysin. Mutta kiitos seuraamista. Tää on ihan käsittämätön tää Enderon. <tos>